Andrew Maxwell Hayden, born in Whanganui, 1950. The promising lock first appeared on the rugby radar in 1971. Standing an imposing six foot six tall or 1.99 metres, Ponsonby's new recruit was big in stature and intellect. Hayden made the All Blacks in 1972. His first trot for the ABs was in the Big Apple against New York Metropolitan, but it would take another five years before he'd make his test debut. Fast forward to 1977, Wellington, where Hayden earned his test stripes against the British and Irish Lions. Hayden played all four tests, the ABs winning the series 3-1. His lineups, an art form. His scrummaging, uncompromising. But Hayden was capable of heroics and also dramatics with his notorious line-out dive in 1978 that some believe denied Wales its first win since 1953 over the ABs. Few Welsh fans have forgotten, even fewer have forgiven. But Hayden wasn't a man for regrets. If that got the Welsh talking, 1981 had the whole world talking. Hayden, part of the hugely controversial Springboks tour of New Zealand, which provoked nationwide protest and global condemnation. But it was a pressure cooker time that Hayden says delivered some of the best rugby he's ever experienced and a groundbreaking time where players found their voice. There is no more difficult time to find concentration than when it's most needed. Mm. And that time, it was most needed because of the amount of distraction. We were able to create a new atmosphere, a different atmosphere, and something that was a lot more um, like the environment that I wanted to be part of. And I think that mm. became very much a player-driven environment. Um, and I see that in, in the environment that the players are operating in today. And with that stark resolve, the Cavaliers emerged. And in 1986, Hayden was instrumental in rallying a rebel side to tour South Africa. The tour breaching a ban on sporting contacts with the apartheid regime. Controversy was never far from the big man on or off the field, and he never dodged it. He was a forerunner for change. When accepting royalties from his autobiography, Boots and All, he rallied against rugby's strict amateur rules, changing his occupation on his passport from professional rugby player to author. Athlete, author, promotions and talent manager. He demanded excellence in business just as he did on the field. He's the man behind the classic All Blacks and many a story has been left behind in Bermuda and around the globe. Andy Hayden captained the All Blacks eight times. His last test appearance was in 1985 against Argentina. That year was his final season with Auckland, a year they took ownership of the Ranfurly Shield, finished second in the national championship, while his club Ponsonby cleaned up everything. He left at the top on his terms. 117 matches, 41 tests, and a few ruffled feathers along the way. The towering lock is considered one of the greatest ever All Blacks. His passing leaves a legacy based on courage, change and controversy. The passport is now closed. The final stamp has been made. What a journey, Andy Hayden. All Black 716. Yeah, but he was a colossus and a legend in the game of rugby. Uh, he was ahead of his time in the game of rugby. Um, he stood up for players. Um, he took on officialdom, but he always did it for the right reasons. Um, and he was just a fantastic rugby player and, and off the field a gentle giant, a fantastic man. He could read the game really, really well and, uh, and he would take it upon himself to control the game. And he was very good at controlling the game, just him up front with his big forwards. And uh, the backs got the ball when they needed to get the ball, and, but he knew how to work the forwards really well. He had very high benchmarks and standards, and, and I think that's another reason why we were really good in those Auckland days. And um, again, I think it's trickled down into the Blues now, and, and even New Zealand rugby even, even more so. One thing Andy did is connect people, and he connected them. Um, Fish as rugby uh, as the vehicle, and then looked after you, and uh, he looked after me. Yeah, he he was the trailblazer. He stood up for what I believe um, a lot of us probably didn't have the uh, the kudos or, or what was going on. We were just more important, and more keen on playing rugby. But uh, he saw that uh, it wasn't fair, and he set about uh, rectifying that.
on Saturday he was playing for Harlequins and on Sunday he was playing for Rugby Roma. And he had trained for Rugby Roma for two days there, fly back and train the last day for the Quins, play Saturday again, play Sunday back in Rome. And so he was a real entrepreneur in, in the way he was jumping around the world, playing money, uh, playing playing rugby and probably getting them paid shitloads for it. <laughs> so he, he wanted to involve families and partners a lot more in the game. He, he wanted players to have more of a say. And... Uh, so has the game moved in his direction? Yes, it has. And so he was more than just a manager. The, the thing that I loved most about Andy was he would tell it to you straight. He would also tell you what was coming. And he was also aspirational in thinking what was, you know, what was the next thing one could think about in their career. A big part of his legacy is um, you know, what we're enjoying now and, and where we sort of find ourselves and even at the pointy cunty edge of professionalism, um, he was way ahead of his time and, and he really did, um, you know, challenge uh, the norm and the convention and because of that um, you know I think we grew up a lot quicker as New Zealand rugby and our game and, and we're enjoying the benefits of great men like him who, who were way ahead of their time. I had the great opportunity to be around Andy Hayden a lot whether it's playing golf or around events and JK you need people who can lead change who can drive things and he was that sort of man that's what Andy Hayden brought when I saw him and the fact that he always had he was always looking at things a little bit differently, but it was easy to support him and get it behind him, but quite often it was around common sense, and he wasn't afraid, though, to put it out there and challenge everyone around him. Yeah, it was a really sad day yesterday. Um, you know, he was a really important man in my life. Um, I only played with him a couple of years, but he was present all through my life, and um, he taught me so many important things, a brilliant role model. Uh, him and Trish were incredibly good to my wife and I, especially when we were struggling in the early parts of our relationship, because English and different countries. So, really important man to me. But um, I'll tell you a story when I was 18, Mills. Um, I'm in the team, and, uh, and big, I called him Big Critic, called me Lean Dog. And so he said, uh, Lean Dog, you got to go and talk to that guy over there, right? And I'm, I'm looking up and I'm looking over, and it's Prime Minister Muldoon. <laughs> And I'm not going to talk to him. He said, if you don't go and talk to him, you're not playing next week. And I said, I said you're not the coach. And he said, Hardy. And called Hardy over. And he said, if JK doesn't talk to Muldoon, he can't play next week. Is that right? And Hardy went, yeah, that's right. So I had to go <laughs> yeah. and talk to Prime Minister Muldoon. And to be fair on Prime Minister Muldoon, he was amazing to me because he's a politician. But it, it, it changed the way I was. I mean, I was a shy young man, you know, and... He, he did that, my first test match. Um, so I'm over the moon, right? And back in those days, we get together on a Wednesday afternoon, midday, and you play Saturday. So I get down there, I'm just, you know, incredibly excited. And we have our first training run, and Andy calls me in and says, JK, uh, we're not playing on Saturday, we're striking. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> we're striking? He said, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm going to... Because the Adidas boot deal, you know, they're getting all the money, so I'm going to wear one laser boot and one Adidas boot, and we're all striking. And Mex is going, yeah, 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 we're striking. I'm, going, no, I'm just going to, I'll play in bare feet, you know. So, um, but he was just such a beautiful man. He, you, you had to be strong of character, but if you're strong of character and stood up for him and stood up for yourself, he, he really respected that, and he wouldn't hold it against you. It wasn't personal. He just wanted you to be, show your character and really, really be yourself. And all the things that people said before was so true. Uh, as former players post your career the last 20 years, Jacko, you get an opportunity to maybe be a part of the classic All Blacks, which is something that he grew, that he, he gave you an opportunity to be a part of, whether it was in Bermuda. I was grateful to get an opportunity, well, I thought I'd be grateful in 2011, it was to play for the classics against Japan, which Sir John Kerwin was coaching, thinking I would get an easy ride, not knowing that JK was going to select a 110 kg winger from Tonga to play on his <laughs> left wing. That was your parting gift to me in my rugby career. But the tour and the camaraderie and the classic All Blacks, he, he was bringing guys together post their career to enjoy the great things about rugby and about being part of a team. And Jacko, you, you, you benefited from it. I, I never made the cut for Bermuda for, for obvious reasons because my off-field performances obviously weren't strong enough. That's why you're an obvious selection <laughs> off the field. You were field. too scared. You just said that before. Yeah, and absolutely, 100% right. Well, you're the same. I think it's a tough, it's a tough rig going to Bermuda. Do, yeah. um, you know, first of all, uh, there's obviously the, the work with the boys, which is, uh, I think I put on four kilos in about two days of, of uh, having a good time with your mates. 
Then the golf. Golf is uh, number one. Critical. Number one for Andy. Yep. And then there's rugby. And as you said, pulling those guys together, I was lucky enough to play it uh, just before refing, so I'd finished my rugby career. But come out and what Andy did to bring those guys together, and, and people just really wanted to go out there and play for Andy. You still had to have pride in the jersey, though, right? Oh, Even though, yes, you'd gone and had a lot of fun outside of the lines and, and when you weren't on the field, you still had to go in front up. And I think that was critical in, in why those teams, one, were successful, but also the camaraderie between them was the fact, you know what, no matter what had gone on, you still went out there and represented a black jersey. 100%. And um, our, we actually met one, thank goodness, and made the final. But I remember in the hotel, we're in this five-star hotel and everyone's around and making a bit of noise and Andy wanted to give us our last-minute speech and there's people paying thousands of dollars for this hotel and he just turned around and told them all to shut up. <laughs> I'm having a big meeting about a game winning. Critical. Everyone came up Absolutely looked at Andy critical. Hayden and they were like, no problem, sir, we'll no. carry on. So no. it was, uh, you know... The, 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 the manner of the bloke is just incredible. I mean, for you, JK, you talked about the influence he had on you. There were, there were so many ways that, though, he, he could, I suppose, he could bring people around him, bring them close, even the fact that, yes, you know, he was a little bit different and he challenged you. You just wanted... I always felt I wanted him to be around him because I knew there was always going to be great conversation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'll, I'll just tell you another a little story about, you know, early, early days, go to Whangarei to play Northland, game's over... And Andy comes to us and says, we're not going inside. We're going to have a beer outside the doors because they won't let our wives and partners in. You know, when you're 18, you're going, you don't know who to... You know, the manager's going, we've got to go inside. And Hayden's going, no, we're, we're staying outside. We all stood outside for the whole after-match function, listening to the speeches. So he was really strong like that. But I loved going around to his place and listening to his stories. He was a great storyteller. Loved stories, loved getting people together, loved listening to stories. He just really, really enjoyed that side of... You know, well, I didn't, I didn't know him very very well. And for, for a long time, like you said, said uh, Jack, I dodged that sort of email that came out about Bermuda or to go out to the classic All Blacks. But I bumped into him last year in Fiji and he came across like that. He asked how the family was or we're in the swimming pool and he was just talking away as if I knew him you know, uh, for a very long time. But what sort of, I suppose, hit me was the fact that it was it wasn't just um, being able to get these All Blacks together and go over and have uh, a connection and play rugby and, you know, do the off-field stuff, but it was also to give them an opportunity, you know, to meet different people. So when they say that he was ahead of his time in terms of the opportunities that came with business, that was certainly what sort of came across to me, that that's what he was trying to do for the others in this club. Totally, and, you know, we're talking about a Pacific Island team. You, you go to, to Fiji, they call them... Ratu Andy Hayden, because he, he's the first one to try and help. Fiji especially had a, you know, had a long relationship with Fiji. So he had this, he, he was a contrast of, you know, like some people would be scared of him, but like I said, had this heart of gold and you just had to earn his respect. So if you didn't, if you said, didn't say something to his face and he heard about it later, he'd have a go at you, you know, and good on him. I loved that about him.